Hey everybody, welcome to the webinar this evening. I'm Chris Fitzgerald from Seawolf Studios. Tonight we're going to be talking about logic versus digital performer for film scoring features. There are, of course, several programs that people use for film scoring in addition to logic and digital performer, like Pro Tools, Sonar, Cubase, Ableton Live is making a lot of inroads for film composers, but the ones we're going to be looking at tonight are Logic and Logic Pro 10 and DP8. On a technical note, if you're having problems with the live webinar stream, try refreshing your screen. That seemed to help people out last time. So Logic and Digital Performer have tons of features and they're used for all sorts of different types of music projects. Um, we don't have time within this one webinar to cover in great detail every single thing that you will use these programs for as a film composer. So I've picked out some of the major things that, I, that I'd that i like to point out. And um, if you want to get more in depth with it, you can take one of our technical aspects of film scoring classes um, through seawolfstudios.net. I'll talk more about that at the end of the webinar. We today are going to be comparing similarities and differences in film scoring features between DP8 and Logic Pro 10 specifically looking at importing video, syncing SMPTE timecode and frame rate, marker management, doing tempo calculations, and dealing with project workflow. Um, before we get too far down that road though, um, I wanna talk first about timecode and frame rate. Before you even load a film into these programs, you need to know what the frame rate of your picture is. So we'll take a look at that. The last webinar that we did is called How to Score a Scene. Here's the YouTube link. I'll um, annotate that in the video archive so that you can click on it. I'll also post it in the, the YouTube comments. Um, in that webinar, we discussed different types of film music, functions of film music, and spotting, and sort of more um, how you write music for picture. Today we're really just going to be looking at technical aspects inside Digital Performer and Logic. So let's jump over to QuickTime. The film that we're going to be using for tonight's webinar is called Brooklyn Chakra and I worked on this with director Femi Agbeewa and producer Adam Prey. And uh, we're going to take a scene out of the middle of this movie. And while I have this video open in QuickTime, um, I want to check the movie inspector, which is over here, to find the frame rate. That's frames per second. QuickTime's telling us that the frame rate is 23.98. That's actually rounding up from the the real frame rate, which is 23.976, which is an unfortunately very obnoxious number to work with. Um, and it's not even really very accurate. There's no such thing as 0.976 of a frame. It really should be 24 frames per 1.001 seconds. Um, anyway, kind of an annoying number to deal with. Um, I have a pretty in-depth blog post on that at seawolfstudios.net if you want to read up on it. But we do need to know this information before we bring it into our application. So the scene that we're going to be working with starts at 1 hour 4 minutes, 0 seconds, 17 frames. Okay. Away from the eyes. Nice. Whoa. <laughs> welcome, welcome. Sit down. Oh, my dad. Hey, fine boys. Hey, fine boys. <laughs> if you want to know the truth, you stare into a man's eyes. Mm -hmm. uh, uh. <laughs> 
<laughs> and mine tell me, you're a good man. <laughs> Even though you haven't been by the house, eh? I knew you and Jimmy would make it. Wait a minute, who do you guys think this is? Jumoke, stop acting silly, it's a day. Ah, the secret is how we know he wants to marry you. <laughs> a man of tradition, <laughs> asking our permission. Mm -hmm. Guys, I haven't dated our day since I was 17. Then who the hell is this? Mom, Dad, this is my fiance, Emeka Nwandu. Ibo! Omo Ibo! Trickster! Um, what the hell is a trickster? A person of low character. Hold up, that doesn't make any sense. You were just praising his character. He lied to me, pretending to be Yoruba. Wow. This is why you couldn't look me in the eyes. Mm -hmm. You're not marrying this man. Yes, let's go. Ma, let's go. Ma, go. Hey, don't mind me. Trickster! You pay for the bill. You will pay, oh! You will pay. Let's go, let's go, let's go. Move, move, move. Ah. What the hell just happened? Jumake! Jumake! Okay, that's our scene. There's actually two pieces. I hate to say the whole ass. Two pieces of music in that scene. <clears throat> um, great, so let's open up Digital Performer. We'll check out DP first. create a new empty project and we will call this Brooklyn Chakra or BKS. Okay, quick overview of Digital Performer for the benefit of those of you who haven't seen it before. We've got some counters up here in the top and uh, we've got our transport controls, stop, play, rewind, record, all of that stuff. We've got all sorts of goodies over here, different editor buttons, um, enable the metronome, and different edit windows here. Tracks editor, sequence editor, and the notation editor, quick scribe, mixing board, and so on. DP has all sorts of cool little consolidated windows that you can pop open like that. And this window can show several different things, including the movie. Now I gotta load the movie into it. That's up here, project, movie, or shift V. It's not a bad idea to copy the movie into your project folder, which I did not do ahead of time, but that's okay. I'll just grab it from here. Okay, great. Now the movie window is a little ridiculous right now. So what I will do is bring that up and have this show markers because we'll need those soon enough. Okay. There are two counters here. One is showing bars and beats. The other right now is showing samples. I want that to show frames. And um, I can hit play. And digital performer starts up and the film starts up. And you can see they are not very well synced up. This is saying one hour, zero minutes, five seconds, 17 frames. And over here, I've got zero hours, zero minutes, five seconds, 21 frames. So I'm already four frames off. And also this film starts at one hour, not at zero. So the first thing I wanna do is change the project frame rate to 23.976. And that takes care of that issue. Now it's 5 seconds, 17 frames, 5 seconds, 17 frames. But the film starts at 1 hour. So I have to go here. Digital Performer's sub-menu buttons are very small. So you've got to watch for them. They're called mini-menus. And um, I want to go in here and set the movie start time. And we'll set the start time to 1 hour. Great. Now the film and digital performer are synced up, but what I have effectively done is moved the hour, the movie one hour forward in my session file. So there's nothing going on for the first hour of this session file. So the next thing I need to do is change the sequence start time. I'm gonna change this sound bites window to chunks. Chunks is a very cool feature in digital performer that we'll talk more about momentarily. I'm going to change the name of this chunk to 
um, Q4, because this is the fourth Q of the film. And I'm going to change the start time to the point in the film where the music starts for this Q, which is 1 hour, 4 minutes, 0 seconds, 17 frames. Okay, we are back online. Now you'll notice this often, the film and digital performer are showing that they're a frame off. The film simply says one hour, four minutes, zero seconds, 16 frames. Up here it says 17 frames. Um, this drift is inconsequential. If you notice when I click on the video, by the way, different consolidated window areas can be active at different times. And the active one will have this blue bar across it. When the movie window is active, you can press the left and right arrow and scrub along by frame, which is extraordinarily helpful when you're going in to add markers later. As soon as I move it around by frame, you'll notice that it is synced up again. So this is showing 19 frames up here, 19 frames. Um, digital performers video syncing capabilities are actually really rock solid. They're, they're sample accurate. Um, so it does a very good job at syncing to picture. Uh, okay, so I'll go back to the start time, which was at 17 frames. And what I want to do is add a marker for the music in point. And um, I can do that up in the menus, but I'm going to do Control M, which is the keyboard shortcut to add a marker. <clears throat> Over here in the markers window, I want to lock that marker. And what locking does is it um, syncs it to the film. It locks it to real time. I'm going to do a tempo calculation and I don't want my markers to move around. I'm also going to change the name of the marker. This is music in. Great. I got another marker at one hour, four minutes, 23 seconds, nine frames. So I'll move the play cursor to that location. Control M. Okay, then I'm going to lock this marker and rename it. So cut to Mr. Afrolabi. Okay. <clears throat> now this marker lands at measure 12 B2 tick 182. There's 480 ticks in every quarter note in Digital Performer. Um, I want this to land on a downbeat. So there's a few ways I can do tempo calculations. And one of the ways is um, DP has this cool feature called find tempo. I can check which markers I want to find tempo for. Then I can right click on this and say find tempo for locked markers. Now this window, um, it's a lot to digest when you first open it up, but what you can do is set a tempo range and um, degree, and it will search at every every uh, incremental change between those tempo ranges, and it will calculate how well different tempos hit your markers. Now this is really helpful if you have multiple markers and you wanna hit them, but stay at a fairly constant tempo. Um, so I'm going to give it a range of, uh, let's say 100 beats per minute to maybe like 130 beats per minute by a very small increment, 0.05 incremental change. And, um, it already performed the search here. So it's telling me that these are my closest ones. 119 beats per minute, 116.35 beats per minute. So these are tempos that will calculate out so that marker lands on, on a beat. It might not necessarily be a downbeat. It might be measure 12 beat two, which is about right where we are. Um, so if you want something to be in four, four, that can be kind of tricky. That's really a longer conversation how to deal with with um, changing the meter around so that your downbeat lands correctly. Um, but what I'm going to do is accept one of these tempos 
113.7. And what I like about DP is you notice when I click on it, it's it's uh, giving me a metronome click at that tempo, which is really helpful. You can kind of preview the tempo. So I'll say apply. Now, uh, one thing I forgot actually is that I have to switch from tempo slider to conductor track. Okay. And now I'll apply the tempo. Okay, great. Okay, so as I was saying earlier, this doesn't necessarily land us on the downbeat of a measure. This puts this marker at um, 11 measures, three beats, 478 ticks, which is less than a frame away from the downbeat of, uh, or from measure 11 beat four, sorry, um, which you can see here. It's kind of like right by beat four. So what I've done with the music that I scored for this scene is um, I wanted that to fall on a downbeat in 4-4 four, four time. So I changed measure one to be a bar of 3-4, which um, then flipped the beat around so that this does fall on a downbeat. So let me show you how to do that. Project, conductor track, change meter. I'll go in here, 3-4, four, four measure one to the next measure, change. And there it is, 3-4 for one bar, then back to 4-4. Four, four. And now that marker falls at bar 12. And you can see over here, 11 4, 4 78. So we are two ticks away from the downbeat of bar 12. Okay, great. So um, let's do a test. Let me back this up a couple of measures, put the metronome on and play and watch for this cut that falls right on the downbeat. The five voice. <laughs> <laughs> and cut. If you want. Good to go. All right, let me bring in the audio tracks now. I have them here, stems, okay. Let's drag them in. You just drop them in the tracks here and it'll create a track for all your incoming audio files. So of course this was previously scored, previously recorded. And uh, let's give it a listen. Whoa. To know the truth you stare into a man's eyes so another feature that dp has that's great is uh, punches and streamers and um, these are visual indications that overlay the video to let you know when it when um, important moments in the film are or when markers happen so you can add a streamer to any one of your markers and you can add streamers of varying lengths. I'm gonna put in a three second streamer at that marker. And let me show you what the streamer looks like. So you can see it moves across the screen from left to right and it hits the right side of the screen and we get a big flutter or a big punch um, right at bar 12. So this kind of a thing is particularly helpful if you're going to be conducting to picture. If you have your musicians in front of you and you're actually looking at the video, you can conduct them and say hold them in a fermata while the um, streamer is moving across the screen and then you can pick them back up in right at that moment and you've got that nice um, visual indicator. So streamers are a great feature. So let's look over at the chunks window 
And this is probably the biggest strength of Digital Performer for film scoring. You can create multiple chunks and each chunk can be a different cue in the film. So you can have every single piece of music for the film all in one Digital Performer project. And you can jump around between the different cues very easily, um, which is so helpful with workflow. So what I'm gonna do is create a new sequence and rename it. This is gonna be Q5 and play enable it. So you can, like I was saying, bounce around really quickly between the different chunks or sequences. Um, great, now what I need to do is set the start time for that chunk. And I do that by right clicking here and I can say um, set chunk start time. So we did this earlier. I want one hour, five minutes, 10 seconds, nine frames. Excellent. Okay, so that comes in right after he delivers a line and the music starts. Okay, so I'll put my marker in where the music comes in, right at bar one, lock it, rename it. Put another marker at a transition point. And uh, the final marker at the music out point. Lock these. This is start of dissolve. And this is music out. Okay, so earlier we did a tempo calculation using DP's find tempo function. There's another way here that I'm going to show you, and it's in project conductor track change tempo. And uh, this is really just a glorified calculator. There's several different types of tempo calculations you can perform. We're going to create a, we're going to do a constant tempo calculation. <clears throat> and I'm going to put in the range of measures that I want to calculate for. Measure one to measure 17. And there's two ways you can do this calculation. You can either type in a tempo and have it spit out the end time. Um, but as a film composer, you want to type in the end time and have it calculate the tempo that will get you to that end time at that measure. So the time um, I need is one hour, five minutes, 41 seconds, 19 frames. And the tempo is 122.1 Oh. Okay. So I have another tempo that I want to calculate out. And um, I want this marker to fall on the downbeat of bar 18. So I want from bar 17 to 18, I want the music to slow down so that 18 lines are up with that marker. <clears throat> so I need to calculate out a retardando. So I'm going to go to project conductor track back to change tempo. This time we want to calculate a tempo curve, or rather a, a linear tempo change. And I want it to st start at bar 17, end at bar 18. I want the start tempo to be 122.10. And I want to type in an end time, so I have to click options and um, I calculated this out earlier actually, so the number's in there. One hour, five minutes, 44 seconds, seven frames. And I will, actually, I want the anchor to be on the start tempo. Okay, let's see what it did. So I can open up the conductor track here and we start at 122.10, and you can see that moving down incrementally. 
until by the time I'm at bar 18, it's around 74 beats per minute. You gotta be careful when you're calculating out retardandos because sometimes it just it doesn't work very well musically. It'll try to slow you down to like 20 beats per minute or speed you up to 260 beats per minute or just some crazy drastic change. Um, okay, let's bring in our audio files for this cue. And let's play this back. He lied to me, pretending to be Yoruba. This is why you couldn't look me in the eyes. You're not married, this man. You pay for the bill. You pay. I hate to say the whole I told you so, but I told you. Okay, great. So, um, <clears throat> I think that's everything I wanted to talk about. Oh, actually, I wanted to talk about V racks. V racks are a cool feature in Digital Performer. Um, so, I only have audio files here because I recorded um, real instruments, but if I go, if I wanted to use a virtual instrument, <clears throat> maybe something like contact, if I loaded up a contact instrument, but I wanted to use that for every single cue, I could load it into what's called a V-Rack. So I add it into my session. I'm gonna actually close this window. And in my tracks window here, I've got this contact instrument track. I can right click on it. And I wanna move this track to what's called a V rack or a virtual rack. And when I did that, it created this V rack in my chunks. And when I click on this, I've got that contact instrument there. So um, let's say I'm I'm doing a MIDI mock-up for a full orchestral score and I've got all my woodwinds and brass and strings and just tons of instruments and all my cues use every use those same the same instrumentation a V rack enables you to just load those up once and every single chunk or sequence can utilize those same instruments without having to reload all the samples or uh, double load them up and have them take up extra extra RAM um, so it's great for workflow. So DP has some really cool workflow stuff. So let's switch and take a look at some of these same things in Logic. So I'm going to quit out of Digital Performer. And let's jump over to Logic. And we'll do some of the same stuff. We'll bring the movie in, we'll set the frame rate, we'll create some markers, and, uh, and explore how you do all that stuff inside Logic. I'm gonna create a new empty project. And before I bring the movie in, um, I'm going to go in and set the project frame rate and uh, and all of that stuff. So just a quick little overview of, of Logic. We've got counters. I'm going to switch over to the custom counter view, which shows me my SMPTE time code. And uh, we've got our transport controls here. And um, uh, we've got all sorts of different editors just like in Digital Performer, this is the Arrange window. I can open up the Notation, or the, I'm sorry, the Piano Roll, which is my MIDI editor. Um, there's a Notation editor, there's a Waveform editor, and so on. So to change the uh, project frame rate, I can go into Project Settings to Synchronization. 
and that's right here. Frame rate we determined was 23.976. And this is actually the same location where I say uh, where the music starts. So um, let me go back and find that. Yes, one hour, four minutes, zero seconds, 17 frames is bar one of Q4. Okay. Now let's bring the movie in. So I have the ability to extract the audio track and uh, you can certainly do this in Digital Performer too. I didn't talk about it when I was bringing the movie in to, to DP, but this can be helpful if you actually need to mix, give them a final mix of your music with the production track or um, often I'll bring the audio track in because I want to sync music elements to um, audio things that are happening or often I want to avoid audio things that are happening. So it's helpful sometimes to be able to see the waveform of the dialogue and all that stuff. Um, for our purposes right now, I'm not going to extract the audio track. I'm just going to bring the movie in. Okay. Now, just like in Digital Performer, you can tuck this away into a consolidated window just by closing the movie. It'll uh, move up here, and I can bring it back out again by double-clicking on it. Um, okay, so I want to create a marker. Control Shift K is the keyboard shortcut for that in Logic. And by the way, you can change all your keyboard shortcuts in Logic in Digital Performer. Um, keyboard shortcut to lock a marker. This um, I was not aware of for a while because I didn't know what this symbol was. Lock empty position of the marker. That is command page down. So if you have a full size keyboard, it's command page down. If you're on a like a Mac laptop, it's command function down arrow. Um, great. Now let me move to the next marker location, which is one four twenty three oh nine. Uh, though, one thing I forgot to do is change the um, Actually, this is a weird little buggy thing that, I, that I've noticed in Logic. Um, it set my movie start time to my session start time, and I don't want that. I don't like that uh, this happens, but I need to change that back to one hour. Zero minutes, zero seconds, zero frames. But this is where you change your movie start time. Logic's default start time is an hour. DP's default start time is zero hours. So, um, so actually with Logic that lined up, except for the buggy thing that happened. Okay, great. Now I've assigned a keyboard shortcut to scrub around by frame, which again is extraordinarily useful just real quickly in logic to change your keyboard shortcuts it's in the logic menu control surfaces no key command sorry and edit or option k you can go in and customize keyboard shortcuts um, what you'll find with logic is that its video syncing capabilities are not as rock solid as digital performers You'll notice that I'm off by a frame. It's showing me 15 frames, and here it's 14 frames. Um, but again, DP's syncing capabilities are sturdier than Logic's. So um, let's bring in our next marker at 1423.09. Yeah, right on that scene cut. 
Control Shift K, Command Down Arrow. Sorry, Command Page Down to lock the marker. And then in this markers window over here, I can rename them just like in Digital Performer, just with a double click. And um, this was Music In. And this is Cut to Mr. Afalari. Okay. So we can do a tempo calculation in logic as well. Before I do that, I want to show the marker track. I can do that by configuring the global tracks right here. We want to see the marker tracks. And this marker is just a little bit beyond the downbeat of bar 12. Um, so I'm going to go into edit tempo, tempo operations. And we will do a calculation for a constant tempo, but just like in Digital Performer, you can do tempo curves to do accelerandos and retardandos. And I want the position to start at bar one, end at bar 12. And as soon as I type in bar 12, it tells me what the SMPTE location of bar 12 currently is um, at our default tempo of 120 beats per minute but I want one hour, four minutes, 23 seconds, nine frames. Oh, back to bar 12. Okay, here is the calculated tempo. So I'm gonna put that in. I'm gonna say continue with new tempo and apply. And that marker jumps to 121178, which is as close as logic could get it, but if we zoom way in, we can see that it's as close as it can get. I'm scrubbing around by frame here. And that will certainly serve our purposes. Okay, let's actually um, open up the uh, previous logic file that I put together that has all these tracks loaded up. And let me play these. Whoa. Okay, great. So the, the biggest drawback to Logic compared to Digital Performer is the, the lack of um, multiple queues in one file. And that can really be a problem. Um, the chunks feature in Digital Performer is really great. So the way that I work around this um, is I'll export out the audio file, bring it into a QuickTime movie, and I'll have all of my cues in a QuickTime movie file. And that way I can watch the whole movie back to back with all the cues back to back and see it all the way through with all the cues. It can be difficult when you're hyper focused on one cue and you don't ever kind of step back and take the high level view and and um, preview everything and see how things work together, especially if different cues overlap. Sometimes you'll have a cue coming out when another one comes in and you got a preview to hear how that stuff sounds. So <clears throat> here's how I'll do it. I'll select all of my tracks, go to um, file, bounce, and I want to bounce the project. And um, what I want to do is call this Q4, and I'm going to put the SMPTE start time in the name because I find that extremely helpful when I'm bringing this into the QuickTime video later. So one hour, four minutes, zero seconds, 17 frames. Okay, and I'll bounce that out. And then I will do the same to Q5. And our start time is one hour, five minutes. 10 seconds, nine frames. Okay. 
Oops, I forgot to specify an end time. Um, project end time is right here. I'm gonna put that at bar 21. And let's do that again. All right, now I'll find those audio files and I'll open them into, um, I have QuickTime Player 7 Pro, which is great for this kind of a, a thing that we're gonna do here. And then I'll also open up the um, movie into QuickTime Player 7. Okay, so what I can do here is Command A to select all, or I can go up here and do it, and Command C to copy, and then in the video file, put the play cursor at one hour, four minutes, zero Stay. seconds, 17 frames. Stay away from the eyes. And then what I want to do is add to movie. Option Command V. And if I go to the window menu to show movie properties, I can see all of the tracks associated with this project. And this one that starts at minute four is the one I just copied in there. So I'm going to name that Q4. Then I'll do the same with Q5, Command A to select all, Command C to copy. And I need to go to, this is why I put the empty time in the name because now I've got a quick reference for it. One hour, five minutes, 10 seconds, nine frames. Mom, Dad, this is my fiance, Emeka Nwandu. Ibo! Paste it in. Q5. Great, now I've got both of these cues in there. So let's do a quick preview. <laughs> Mom, Dad, this is my fiance, Emeka Nwandu. Ibo! Amo Ibo! Great, so they're there. And um, the thing that's nice about this is that I can export out the video uh, or I can trim the video and just grab a couple of scenes and export out those to send to a director to have them preview it. And that can be really helpful. So, um, so again, DP has the strength of having multiple chunks um, in logic. What I do is have a new logic file for every single queue, and I export them out and uh, throw them into a QuickTime movie to preview them. So it's a workaround. So in summary, pros of Digital Performer are that its video engine provides sample accurate syncing. Digital Performer has been catering to film composers for a long time, it is a rock solid program for SMPTE timecode syncing. Its chunks feature allows for a tighter workflow. You can have multiple queues. You can have all your queues in one digital performer session file. It's, pu it's punches and streamers overlay is fantastic if you need it. And it's now on Windows. So that's great for the PC users out there where Logic is just still an Apple product. Um, pros of Logic. It's $199, you really can't beat that. That's the big strength of Logic Pro 10. It's very accessible and affordable. It comes with great bundled content, including a full orchestral suite. Now these aren't the most fantastic sounding and the best sampled orchestral instruments available, but you have them um, available with Logic Pro 10, so that's great. The drummer and drum kit designer are really great. Um, they, they're, making a strong effort at replacing the session drummer. So sorry for all you drummers out there, but um, the drum kit designer in Logic is really wonderful. And Logic has a full featured sampler where Digital Performer does not. The EXS24 in Logic is great. You can 
open up Giga files. You can also fully map out sampled instruments and um, bring in your own audio files and, and build your own sampler instruments. If you guys want to get more into this stuff, then check out our classes at Siebel Studios. We have a few coming up. And um, as a thank you for attending this webinar, I'll give you guys a promo code to get 20% off on all of our classes. We have a few that are coming up. We've got the technical aspects of film scoring with Digital Performer and with Logic. And those are both two week long classes. They start October 30th. And uh, we will go way in depth into Logic and DP in both of those classes and cover stuff that we didn't have time to talk about today, like track stacks and track groupings, dealing with multi-channel instruments in these programs, um, automation, creating dub and final mix session files, and more in-depth film scoring workflow kinds of things. We also have our flagship course. It's a six week long class called The Art of Film Scoring. It starts November 11th. We cover film music history, thematic analysis, music theory and composition techniques. We get into some technical aspects on film scoring and we talk about self-promotion tips for film composers. By the end of that course, you will have two demo pieces fully scored. We also have our MIDI Mockups 1 orchestral instrumentation class which goes into Western music history, looking at key composers and uh, the evolution of the orchestra over the eras. And we will explore orchestral families and specific instruments, looking at instrument range, tonal characteristics, and typical function, those kinds of things. We will analyze orchestral scores. And by the end of that class, you will have sequenced a full orchestral MIDI mock-up. These classes, uh, you can register for them at seawolfstudios.net. And again, you can save 20% on all of them with this promo code here, Seawolf Online, all one word. And spots are limited, so please register now. If you think you want to take the, one of these classes, I would suggest to register sooner rather than later because I suspect that they'll fill up. Um, so thank you for your time tonight, and um, I hope to see you guys in other webinars or in other courses. Take care. Thanks.